This is a mistake. I cut this NIDA core to be a tight fit in the spot where the windows are, thinking that I'll put a rectangular window that opens in here, but then I changed my plan. My first thought was to put in a window with like a slot in it that could be open. And that would give me a much smaller opening. And I decided on something different, which would be to have something over the entire opening of the window that would open. So the whole, the big, the hole cut in the hull would be fully open for airflow as though the windows had been completely taken out of the boat. On the outside of that, there will be a flange, a raised area so that water running off of the roof won't run in the window, and a hinge for the piece that goes over that with the actual window in it that can open. The window, the hinge, the flange, everything that can be taken back there and then just glued onto the boat in like one afternoon. I made this piece of core when I was planning to close off the window and put a rectangular opening window in the middle of this. So this was the piece that was going to go in the hole in the side of the boat where the window was. And it's cut to be a tight fit in the hole. So by tracing around it, I can get this line that represents the part that I should cut out. And like the honeycomb cord, the venicell can be cut with a razor knife or an oscillating tool. This piece here is two inches thick and it's used for that flange that will go around the edge of the window so that water running off of the roof won't run into the window, hopefully. And it's a lot smoother after a little bit of sanding. And now I'm sanding some more and rounding over the top edge because I want to lay fiberglass over this and it'll be a lot easier with a curved edge. See there's the 90 degree bend at the bottom and the curve for what's supposed to be the top. And it's at this moment that I realize I sanded the wrong side and with any luck this part will fit on the other side of the boat. And since I didn't have enough of that thick core, I cut these pieces out of that part that was cut out of the middle. Otherwise, I wouldn't have enough of the two-inch core to actually finish the project. And this is how it looks now. I'm using some fairing compound as a glue to glue these pieces to the other part that will eventually be glued to the boat. I'm using more fairing compound to make a radius curve at the edge where this meets the flat part that will be glued to the boat. And then all of this will have to be sanded really smooth before it can be fiberglassed. So this part is getting just one or two layers of some very thin three-quarter ounce chopped strand mat, 
just to seal the part and give it a little bit more strength than just foam. And gel coat will go nicer over the fiberglass, so it needs one layer of fiberglass. And the thin chop strand mat conforms to compound curves really easily. Whenever I use this, you have to put more layers on if you need it stronger, but everybody thinks I really know what I'm doing when I use this kind of glass. And after about an hour, I can use a razor knife to cut off the excess that ran past the edge or most of it. And then the next day I can use a sander to sand off the last of it and knock down any of those glass splinters. I'm going to use a trash bag and some packing tape to seal this. And then it will be used as a mold to make the next piece that will be the piece that the window will actually go in. It'll conform to curve over this flange on all sides and hold the window in the middle and then up above there it should stick out enough to hold the hinge. So I'm going all I'm making sure that the packing tape overlaps and that every place is covered with packing tape. And once that's done, I'm laying up fiberglass over that piece that I just finished. And I'm about to make a mistake here. I don't like the way the fiberglass is following some of the ripples in the plastic. And I used some trash bags as a release layer. And I thought the window would be the perfect thing to lay there and smush all of that flat, which it did. But the chemicals from the resin actually went through the trash bag and affected that protective layer on the window and also affected the plastic of the window just a little bit. So I definitely want to, don't want to do that again next time. So now that this is smushed flat, I'm going around and laying a whole bunch more layers of that really thin chopped strand mat because since it's so thin, you need more layers to build up the thickness for strength. But it really does conform to compound curves beautifully. These pieces probably weren't necessary, and they're not going to be a part of the finished piece. I'm using some bigger pieces of fiberglass to fill in the center area rather than having it open there. And the only reason is to make the part stronger so it's less likely to break while it's being demolded. So this is the next day, and I'm sanding off any glass splinters and just basically smoothing this out a bit. And I have these plastic wedges for separating parts from molds. And <clears throat> once you get a couple of them in at the edge and it starts separating, once the third one is in, Basically, you could take the middle one and move it to the end. And that's what I just keep moving the middle one to the end and moving it to the end and walking my way along this until finally I get 
enough separated that the two parts will release. And that's that nidacore that is the exact size of the opening in the boat for the window. And here the packing tape and trash bags peel off really easily. Leaving me with this part that is basically the perfect shape molded to fit over that flange around the window. And next time, I'll see, maybe I'll make a fiberglass hinge for it or cut the center out and glue the window in. Something like that has to happen next time.